Yesterday I made the first video on the TikTok page and it went down fairly well. But a good few people were asking for a more detailed video covering the points that I raised in that TikTok in a more comprehensive light. So that is exactly what this is. Before we go any further though, the revision strategies and techniques that I'm going to detail in this video require at least three months of time before the exams. If you're watching this at a point in time where the exams are in two weeks, this is not the video for you. There will be another one on the channel, just go and find it. This is more aimed if you're in the first few months of year 13 at the latest. Like I said though, the earlier the better. So honestly, I do believe that if you got a D on the end of year mock in year 12, or even an E, you can still pull an A out of the bag. At the end of year 12, my physics mock that was AS physics paper one and two, so practically everything we learned that year, I got a grand total score of 31 out of 80 on paper one, and 30 out of 80 on paper two. That added up to 61 out of 160, which is exactly 38.125%, 38%. 61 out of 160 or 38% was a D. At the end of year 13, when I sat my real A level, I got two marks off an A star. The paper is currently being remarked and my physics teacher reckons I've been robbed of three marks. No matter the outcome of the remark, I went from a D to an A, maybe an A star by the end of this month. Although in this video, I'm detailing the method that I altered slightly for chemistry. The method is so similar for physics. I thought that this point was worth sharing. I did this all really in about six months. This is first-hand evidence that this method works. And that's why I'm endorsing it so heavily. The first thing you've got to do is establish what you know and what you don't. In the description of this video, there is a link to the exact spreadsheet that I used when I was doing this. The first task is to figure out what we've actually learned in lessons. Obviously, depending on where you're up to. If you're at the start of year 12, you may only have covered two of these specification points. But if you're at the start of year 13, you will have covered everything that says AS level in the box, in the column that says AS or A level. If you can't remember what one of these specification points actually entails, if you click the blue underlined headings in the far left column, which is organic, inorganic and physical chemistry, it will take you straight to the AQA specification for A-level chemistry. And you can then scroll down through it and see what that heading actually consists of. If I tap this physical chem button, you'll see that it takes me to the physical chemistry part of the specification. And listed here, we can see exactly what atomic structure consists of. You're going to do this for every single one of the topics that you've put yes in the covered box for. And if you've not covered it yet, you deal with that when you've finished learning it in school. After you've finished deciding whether you've covered it or not, now it's time to rate yourself. You might want to open the specification back up, scroll through and see exactly what that point entails if you can't quite remember. And if you're reading it going, ah, yeah, I know exactly what this means. I remember exactly what AQA like in the mark schemes. Give yourself a nine or a 10. If you're reading it going, Jesus Christ, I've got no idea about any of this. Give yourself a two, a three or a one or even a zero. You've got to be brutally honest with yourself because this is essential to the next part of this revision strategy. The column that says Anki deck will be explained very well later on in this video. We've established what we don't know. So the next thing to do is learn or relearn in order of worst to best. You're probably going to be sitting there going, what the hell do you mean learn? Obviously, I'm not going to just leave you like that. I'm going to tell you exactly how you're going to go about this. The first part of learning and relearning is understanding. You're going to watch our YouTube videos. You're going to read a textbook. You're going to go and find the notes on our website and read through and get a great understanding of what you don't know. This is the hardest part, but with the variety of ways you can get this understanding, there will be one of them that works. For one topic, you might need a YouTube video. For another, you might need notes. You've just got to try all of the available options to you to get the understanding. If none of them work, try speaking to a teacher. And if that is something you can't really do due to you know, you don't have their email or they're too intimidating. Try speaking to your friends that are in the class. The best way to go about this though is to read or watch a YouTube video without writing anything down the first time and just trying to get your head around the concept. And then the second time, then taking detailed but concise notes. When you're writing down notes, sometimes you'll go, hang on, I've got no idea what I'm writing here. And then you can go back to the video or the textbook and fully solidify your understanding. The next thing to do once we've learned stuff is remember stuff. You may have finally understood that one specification point that you couldn't get your head around the first time, the second time or the third time, but now we've got to commit it to long-term memory. So that is what the next section of this video is about. After finishing my notes, I would grab a fresh piece of paper or a whiteboard. I would then turn those concise notes into a set of 10, 15, maybe 20 questions. The example I used in the TikTok video was PH. 
you need to remember the definition of it. In my concise notes, I'd have the pH definition written down. And on the second piece of paper, I would turn that into a question such as define pH. This is then repeated for everything on your notes. The next thing to do then, take your phone or your iPad out, go to the app store and download the app called Anki. The one that I used cost 20 pound but it was the best 20 pound I ever spent in my whole life. I'm now gonna screen record my phone and show you the exact way I went through. Turning those questions I just created from them notes that I just made into Anki flashcard decks. This is the screen you're faced with when you've just opened the Anki app. In the bottom left corner, there is a button that says add slash export. So I'd press add slash export. This allows you to click the button that says add empty deck. We then give it a name. I named every single one of my decks as a specification point. For example, 3.1.12 acids and bases. Then tap on the deck itself. At the top, there is a button where it says add, tap that. On the front, put your question. For example, define pH. On the back, put minus log 10 H plus. Hit save in the top right. And that card is now added to this deck. I'd repeat this process for every single one of the points I'd made in my piece of paper that had the questions on it. Once you're done, tap cancel in the top left. And now you can see, in this case, it's the one and only card I have, but it would be the random order of the cards in your deck. As soon as you've finished a deck, you wanna answer every single question in it. So obviously I only have one, but I'd tap the screen. And at the bottom, we have four rating scores. One minute again, six minutes hard, 10 minutes good, or four days easy. This is the level of difficulty you faced when answering that question. If you were struggling to remember it a lot, you tap one minute again, then six minute hard, then 10 minute good, then four day easy, depending on how easy or difficult you found the question to answer. I'm gonna say that I found this hard just for the purpose of the video. Tap the hard button. It asks you it again. You tap it now. I'm gonna say, yeah, that was good. And I'm gonna say, mm, it took me two tries. I'm actually just gonna press good. But as you can see, it's changed from 10 minutes to one day. That means tomorrow, when I come back on my phone, I'll have a notification to review that card. The easier you find something, the more time between asking you the question again it takes. If you keep answering the question and pressing easy because you genuinely found it easy, that means you've committed that piece of information to long-term memory and you don't need to see it again. Here is all the decks I'd made for chemistry when revising for my A-levels. You can see it covers every single one of the specification points. One thing I wanna be clear on too that I've not mentioned is if you're watching this video looking for a revision method and you're at the very start of year 12 and you're wondering when on earth am I gonna make these Anki decks? The answer is simple. As soon as you finish learning everything in a specification point, it is at that point you make the Anki deck. And if it's a larger specification point, and you'll know when it's a larger specification point, because it will take a long time in terms of lessons, you can make them as you go along. But my general rule of thumb, make the flashcard decks when you've finished learning the specification point. That's if you're doing it as the knowledge is coming. If you're doing this like I was, when the vast majority of the knowledge had already been covered, then just do as much as you can in as short time as you can. One thing that I've not mentioned so far, we've only talked about remembering the content up to this point, is past paper exam questions. These are essential to doing well in the A-level. There's no question about that. However, you're not gonna be able to answer a single exam question if you don't know the content. That's why I've focused so heavily on the Anki memory retention side of this video. In terms of exam questions, there's a few general rules that I'd give. Before you start attempting them, you definitely want to have finished that specification point. Before you start doing exam questions on bonding, you need to have finished all of bonding. If you're in the middle of year 12 or 13 and you've got an exam coming up on, say, whatever you've learned in that half term, so long as you've been doing the Anki strategy and making flashcard decks, you can then go and practice exam questions for an hour a day, two weeks or one week before the exam, and you'll be fine. In terms of the real exams though, there's no substitute to doing entire past papers and doing them under timed conditions. If you've been applying this Anki method for three to six months, or maybe even from the very start of year 12, once you're about six weeks out from the exams, bearing in mind you've been doing all this Anki work for like a year plus, that's when you wanna start doing entire papers, maybe one or two exam papers every week. You will see that if you've been committing to the Anki side of things and getting the knowledge down 100%, exam papers will be relatively easy compared to what you will be used to before. But like I keep saying in this video, the knowledge retention is crucial. The biggest things I can say to you as well is just know that this is gonna be difficult. 
It's a simple strategy, but it's hard work and it's tedious at some times. But at the end of the day, walking on away with an A or an A star in chemistry proves that you can do practically anything. It's one of the hardest A levels. If you're applying this method from the start of year 12, you will walk the exam at the end of year 13. You get an A star, no questions at all. But like I said a minute ago, applying this is difficult. It's hard work. For now, that's everything. And I just want to wish you good luck in your revision because I know it's difficult. I've been there. If there's anything you want us to add to the YouTube channel, comment below or send us an email. The website's also in the description. Thank you for watching. See you later.